So here is is a little um, 101 on who's going to be participating this Saturday. To get locked in, you either won uh, a race last year or early this season, past all-star winners and cup champions, and then we're going to put in those stage winners from the Open and, of course, the fan vote. That takes us to 19 drivers that will be competing for the one million bucks. Here are the 15 that we know will be a part of the festivities on Saturday. Eric Alvarola won last year at Talladega. I'm not going to tell you how all these guys got in, but the 15 you see on your screen will not be in the open. They will just start in the all-star race itself. And and that takes me to just the overall mentality and mindset of an all-star event. It's shorter. There's no points, a, a big cash payout. What does that do for the drivers, David? It usually makes them uh, a little crazy and probably take chances that they normally wouldn't take. I mean, a, a top five doesn't matter. A top ten, we saw those highlights from last year. Nobody remembers who finished third or fourth or fifth or really who even sat on the pole. It's all about the winner. And, and sometimes when that mentality is set, you'll do things that you normally wouldn't do on a restart. Maybe you would put it three or four wide when you normally wouldn't do it. You would be extra aggressive. And that's what makes the all-star race so much fun for, for the drivers, the crews. I don't know if the owners like it too much because there's usually some torn up race cars afterwards. But uh, a lot of unknowns going into the weekend like we've talked about. But there's really nothing that matters other than winning, and you try to do all you can to do that. And, and the format also complements the uniqueness of All-Star Night. And here is, is what happens. We mentioned the Open. 20 laps, 20 laps, and 10 laps are the stages. The winner of each of those stages advances on to the All-Star Race. And once we get in to the actual main event, we go 30 laps, 20 laps, 20 laps, and then that 15-lap shootout to determine who wins it. And here's the big thing for me. We love overtime in NASCAR. Overtime rules actually apply at the end of each of those stages. This race can be expanded by a number of laps. Is a crew chief, how do you handle strategy on that, Cole? Yeah, I think we saw that last year, the end of stage three. I think there was a caution with, uh, with one to go, and there was some of us that elected to come and pit, some stayed out, and that really dictated the strategy for the last stage. You know, But this year, the last stage going up five laps, you know, kind of changes it a little bit. Maybe more cars will pit, you know, coming in the last stage. It's uh, it's a lot of unknowns, and the overtime is definitely one of them. I, for one, am rooting for a lot of overtime Saturday evening. And, and we talked earlier about the anticipation of 2018's race because of a new arrow set up on the cars. Similar situation to what we're going to see yeah. this weekend. I think a lot of, of the folks in, in the NASCAR world have fallen in love with what we're seeing, using this as a little bit of a, a test session for the future, David. Yeah, the collaboration with, with NASCAR, with uh, Speedway Motorsports, Marcus and Bruton Smith, it, this is really a pr- perfect opportunity to get in some tweaks to the rules package in, in a real life race situation. You know, we've we've had this new rule package to start the year and there's a few things that we've seen, hey, we'd like this a little different, we'd like that a little different to help the racing, to help the drivers pass. And so this is a, a perfect opportunity. It's a lot better than a, a test session for two or three cars. So it's in a race, you can have some fun, and you can get some trial and error on maybe what the future may bring later this year or next year. Yeah, because it, it is real. Drivers competing, you're putting a number of cars out there, so you, you really get a true understanding of how these cars are going to react under these circumstances. And Cole, I want you to take us through what changes have been made to the cars for what we'll see Friday and Saturday. Yeah, the first big one is, uh, as you see here, is the splitter. Um, the step edge basically across the center is uh, is a big change. You know, previously on our current splitter where that blue line is, the flow can basically be choked off at any point that you get too low. Well, now with these rub blocks on the side, if you get too low, you're able to keep the air flowing underneath. And then they've added a lip along here on the top edge to kind of help that flow continuously you know, get underneath the car, which is where a lot of the underbody downforce is generated in these things, which the idea behind that is that you're in behind a car, you know, stuck behind them in traffic. You still have flow running underneath it and uh, you still have good handling in traffic. And now I'm going to do something that I've never done on Race Hub before. I'm going to use the phrase hood scoop. What's this all about, Cole? Yeah, so, you know, currently right now the air basically dumps through the radiator and into the engine compartment and kind of gets stalled underneath the hood, which kind of creates lift. Um, so basically now with these hood scoops, the air is going to flow out through those that comes through the radiator at the, at the leading edge of the car. And then, as we see in the next frame, comes out through these ducts in the hood. And now that flow will get in, then go into the, uh, the outer body of the car and then generate more downforce that way. So you're basically, again, just trying to 
create more downforce in a traffic efficient way that hopefully allows you know cars to be able to hand, but handle better in traffic and, and uh, hopefully allow for better racing. General consensus is we could see this again on the Gen 7 car, maybe 2021. Yeah, is I think right? this is a good opportunity just to, to try something in a real race situation as we develop and think about that Gen 7 car, that this is a great opportunity to try that. And, and it helps the cars run in second, third, fourth, fifth to be able to have some fresh air running underneath their car. And, and I think it's a great idea. 